I've had a number of students in the past ask me to clarify what the different tangents do when working with animation curves in the graph editor. So I'm just going to take a look and go over, we're just going to take a look at all the different tangents or the most commonly used ones and just have a look at what they do, how they affect animation curves and some of the most appropriate uses for them in character animation or for any animation really. So I have a few items here that I'm going to use to demonstrate. We have a camera and we have a ball. So we're just going to use the ball for now and then we'll use the camera near the end. All right, so you want to have your graph editor up. I'm going to make this my side view. I'm just going to animate the ball going around in a circle and I'll just key it every five frames. I'm just going to press S on the keyboard. So I'm just going to place the ball on the side of the, the right view here. And I'm just going to animate it in quarters. Just for now, just to demonstrate. So I'm placing a key on 1, 5, 10, 15. And then we can copy and paste this frame on frame 20. There, so we should have a, a cycle happening here. Okay, so you can see my keys on the timeline. We have a key every five frames. I'm just going to shift this over so it's even. So 1, 6, 11, 16, and 21. So they're five frames apart. And this is the animation that we have happening here. In the graph editor, I'm going to select all the translates. And we'll hit F on the keyboard to frame all those. And we can scale the graph editor to take a look. And we can see our Z, our X, and our Y curves for the translations. We're not dealing with any rotations here because I didn't rotate the ball at all. We're just dealing with some translations, with this, which is basically uh, just move, which means move. So all the movements, but no rotations. So the three channels, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so what we have here are basically spline tangents. So if I select all three of these, just press F on the keyboard to frame all of them, and I'll just drag a box over all of these. At the very top of the graph editor up here, the most commonly used tangents that I use every day for animation are spline, linear, flat, and stepped. So when doing character animation, most of your most of your movements are going to be in spline and flat. Spline is for mid-motion animation, and flat is usually for holds, but you don't want to have them completely flat because the character will be too static. If I select all this animation and hit spline, it basically smooths the curves out. So this is what it looks like when it's splined. Now we can refine that so it moves in a perfect circle. Right now it's sort of moving in a diamond shape. That's what it looks like spline. If I change them to linear by clicking on the linear tangent, just if you look at the curve, you'll see now they're all, um, the curves basically move from point A to point B from key to key. They're all straight. That's, it's going to affect our animation in the same way. The ball's going to move straight from each key that I set. Now if I select all those curves again, if I press the flat tangents, so we're going to make all the keys flat. So you can see what happens. Each key basically flattens out and it, it generally just eases in and out of each key. So if I play that now, it's basically easing in and out from one key to the next. With all the keys still selected now, if I press the stepped tangent button, it literally looks like steps and it's basically just going to pop from one key to the next. So now you can see as I play it, you can see the ball just pops, literally pops from one key to the next. And that's step tangents. So basically what the tangents do is it, it decides how the, how the animation is going to move in between the keys, in between the keyframes. So let's put that back to spline again. And normally we animate in spline. Like I mentioned earlier, we use flat tangents to ease in and out of, of certain things. And usually animation starts and ends with a flat tangent. Unless it's uh, an action cut, then we'll use a, a linear tangent. But when you click on these tangent buttons, you can select any one key. I had all the keys selected, but you can select just one key and change the tangent that way as well. So these tangent buttons at the top of the graph editor basically just get you part of the way there. But you don't need to use them. You can actually um, modify the, the tangents yourself. You can grab for each one of these, any one of these keys, you can select a key. I, I like to drag a box over them rather than try and point and click. And when you do have a key selected, you get a bezier handle on each side. It's also easier just to drag a box over the handles rather than trying to point and click. Once you have one of the, one of the handle sides selected, you can use your middle mouse button to bend the curve. 
So you can see how I'm, I'm basically rotating that key and bending the curve, and you can see the effect. So we can sculpt and shape our animation curve that way. Using the tangent buttons just kind of gets us halfway there. So say for example I wanted this ball to move in a perfect circle as opposed to a diamond. I would have to use the translate Z and the translate Y. I would have to sculpt this curve. And just keep scrubbing over it. So selecting each key, then selecting the handle, and just bending it. I'm just, I'm just affecting the translate Y right now. Just to sculpt that curve out to make it do what I need it to do. And then it's moving in a little bit more of a, a rounded shape. To get this ball to move in a more rounded shape, I need to affect the translate Z in this case. So what I could do is just select these two keys on either end, and instead of bending them so that they're flat, I could just select them and then just press the flat tangent button and it'll just, it'll just automatically it'll automatically just flatten those out for me. It's just a quick way of getting there. And then now when I play this, it's moving in more of a circular motion. So I just tweak the curves basically to just to, uh, to round out the in-between movements and just change the animation in between the keyframes. When a student asks me what the tangents are for, or how to use the tangents, the short answer is basically, they're just buttons to quickly change the curve. When you're sculpting out your animation curve, you can really just use the handles and use the middle mouse button to, to bend the handles. But you need to bend the curve yourself to shape the animation curve. It takes practice getting used to the graph editor and learning how to modify the curves to get the desired animation. Now one of the tangents that we don't normally use in character animation, unless maybe you're, if you're blocking, is the stepped, step tangent. Now some people like to block and stepped. I don't really prefer it, but some people like to block using the step tangent. So say they'll do some rough animation and they'll keep the tangents on stepped. So if I select all of these, all these curves, again we'll make it stepped and people will just block their animation this way and that's basically their animation will just pop from pose to pose. When I'm blocking my animation, I like to keep it on flat and spline. I like to have my holes on flat and basically all the motion between poses on spline just so that I can see what it's going to look like. But another really common use for step tangents are uh, camera keys. So setting keys on the camera between cuts. So basically just to get the camera to pop from one location to another. So let's have a look at how we can do that. All right, so I have my camera here and I have a couple of characters. I'm just going to make this panel my camera view. All right, so I have a Kayla and Kylie rig from Josh Sobel Rigs. All right, so I'm going to place the camera up here, just a, a bird's eye view, and it's basically going to be our establishing shot. Whenever there's a start of a new sequence in a, in a story, a lot of, oftentimes they'll, they'll use an establishing shot just to show us where the characters are. So with my camera selected, I'm going to key that on frame one. Usually an establishing shot only lasts about three seconds, so let's say we're animating at 24 frames a second. So we'll go to frame 72. We're going to key that camera again. And sometimes establishing shots have a nice little push in. So I'm going to I'm going to push the camera in a little bit and just key that. All right, so we'll go to the next frame. We'll go to frame 73. And let's move our camera. I'm just going to use the camera view to, to move it. Let's just assume that Kayla's speaking first. So we'll do a POV shot. We'll select our camera and we'll just key that on frame 73. So that's going to be our next shot. Now I'm not going to do the tangents yet. So say the shot lasts a few seconds. Now we're going to move the camera to the other, the opposite POV. And then say Kayla's talking. It's a shot of her speaking or she could just, it could just be a shot of her listening or reacting. So we're just going to do those three shots. Okay, so if I play that now, we have our establishing shot pushing in. And then the camera actually zooms around. So we don't want that to happen. We want to have a couple of camera cuts. So let's look into our graph editor with the camera selected. And let's take a look at the curves. Okay, so I'm just scaling my graph editor so I can see the curve a little bit better for the translate X. Just for example, so when we play that establishing shot, it started off really so slow and then it zooms in quite fast. 
normally for an establishing shop, we would want it to push in at a, at a steady rate. If I look at my translate X curve for the camera, you can see what it does. It starts flat and then slowly starts to increase in speed. So what we would want to do is make this curve um, linear. So what I would do here is just drag a box over both keys or shift select both of them. And then we just press our linear button up at the, up at the top. And that's the beauty of those buttons at the top of the graph editor. You can just hit the linear tangent and immediately gives us a nice straight translate X curve. And I'll do the same for the translate Y and the translate Z. So if I just select the translate Y and press F to focus in on it, we just drag a box over those first two keyframes and hit the linear button. And do the same thing for the translate Z, hit the linear button. So now when we play the just the establishing shot, should be a nice even move. So I just uh, used one key from frame 72 to 73. So I did translate and rotate the camera to get it there. So for these other two camera cuts, basically camera cuts are animated with step tangents. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select that next keyframe and the last keyframe. And remember we're grabbing all the translates and rotates for the camera keys. You see how those curves are flowing into the next key? So they're basically flat on this end and they're flat on the other end. We want them both to be stepped. So we're just going to step those just by selecting them and pressing the step tangent button. So basically what's going to happen here is it's going to pop after the establishing shot. It's going to pop into its new location here on this row of keys. With the flat curves, it's going to hold its position and then it's going to pop into its new position on this row of keys here at the end. So if we play it now, we have our slow push in for our establishing shot and then shot one shot two. You can also change your preferences so that whenever you set a key it'll actually make each keyframe that you set a certain tangent by default. If you go to your preferences you can get there by going to the bottom right hand corner of your Maya interface and just click on that little button there. And if you go up to animation in your preferences right under where it says tangents currently it's on auto. I usually just keep mine on auto. You can change the tangent here to automatically set your keys on flat, spline, or whichever tangent you'd like. Basically, every time you press S on the keyboard to set a key in Maya, it'll key it in, in, the, in that tangent automatically. I hope that clarifies things a little bit more regarding the tangents for animation curves. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.